Hello. I'm Alicia Archibald, Senior Editor of Pumps and Systems Magazine, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar where you will learn about seals and their critical role in water savings in pulp and paper plants. Today's event is sponsored by John Crane. John Crane has provided two speakers today, and we're also delighted to have a speaker with us from Andritz. Um, and I'll introduce them to you in a moment. But first, a little housekeeping. I want to let you know that we are recording today's webinar, and it will be available at our website, pumpsandsystems.com, by early next week. The presentation itself will last about 45 minutes, followed by a short question and answer session. Please submit your questions to the chat feature on the lower left-hand side of your screen. So we're just going to go over the session objectives. Um, today you should learn about typical pulp and paper pumps and seal applications and their biggest challenges. You'll learn to recognize environmental trends and become aware of the best available technology to invest in to meet increasing environmental and safety expectations and regulations. Um, you'll understand the importance of seal selection and the economic and environmental benefits the right seal can have on plant operations. You'll learn new tools and strategies that can be easily deployed to achieve seal water savings right away. And we'll identify results of a real-world case study with our speaker from Andritz, enabling you to apply practical strategies and best practices to your own plant for increased success. I know from our reader surveys that uh, economic and environmental impact, are those are very high on the list of needs um, from our readers and that also seals are one of our top components that people need to know more about, so you're in for a treat today. Our speakers, I'm now delighted to introduce. Our first speaker is UC Soryova. He is a pulp and paper market director at John Crane, responsible for identifying new business growth strategy needs worldwide. He has worked in the sealing industry at John Crane for more than 30 years. He holds a BS in mechanical engineering from Helsinki University of Technology. He has represented John Crane in the European Sealing Association and is a member of the Forest Product Engineers Association in Finland, where he is based. Our next speaker is also from John Crane, Mark Savage. He's product group manager at John Crane, responsible for the application design and development of metal bellows seals for pumps, compressors, and rotating machinery. He's worked in the sealing industry for 24 years and has been involved with development of best practices for shaft seals and their support systems. Mark holds a Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering from the University of Sydney. He's a member of the Fluid Sealing Association NACE International and the Society of Tribologists and Lubrication Engineers. He is based in Warwick, o, um, Rhode Island. And then our speaker from Andritz today is Alexander Passler. Uh, Alex is the R&D manager of Standard Pumps at Andritz's pump division, responsible for new developments to meet customer needs. He works specifically for in suction pumps in the pulp and paper and water industries. He represents the link between product management, sales, design, and the service department. He has more than 10 years experience and holds a degree of Master of Mechanical Engineering and he's based in Graz, Austria. So you can see you're in very good hands today. This is a very interesting uh, presentation with a lot of information. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. And with that, I will turn it over to you, C. Yes, uh, thank you, Alice, and uh, welcome all to this webinar. Uh, I'm going to talk today about pulp and paper industry and address some of the sealing challenges we have there. As you can see on my cover slide, here I have used the United Nations statement that almost 3 billion people will face severe shortage of water by 2025 if we keep on consuming water at the current rate. So this is an important matter. Uh, but actually, before we start, um, I would like to take a quick poll of the audience for the feedback to understand the reasons joining this webinar and just to make sure that we address the important issues for you. 
This will probably take only about uh, a few seconds, so I'm asking if you could just click the relevant option on the screen and uh, uh, submit your uh, uh, answers here. I'm going to give you a few seconds to fill in the, uh, the questionnaire here. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I guess a big part of uh, the participants here are really joining the meeting because they want to understand the efficiency improvement better. And I think we will address that question quite well during this, this webinar. Well, I'm going to start first with the, uh, uh, an image here. Uh, this is a typical non-integrated pulp mill. The pulp mill takes some form of fiber, and that is typically wood, and creates a waterborne slurry of free individual fibers. This slurry is called paper or uh, pulp. Process can be chemical, mechanical, or combination of both. The most common method is the chemical pulp mill, uh, which uses strong caustic solution or cooking ligger called white ligger to dissolve the organic clue-like uh, thing called lignin, which bonds the individual fibers together. If the pulp mill is a standalone uh, operation, it will be producing market pulp or bales of rough sheets of dry pulp, which will then be shipped in bulk to a paper mill to produce a variety of uh, products such as paper, newsprint, tissue, and so on. Today, every pulp company strives to maintain its commercial advantage in an increasingly competitive global marketplace. Important factor in this is process reliability. This ties into equipment and sealing systems, high reliability that is achieved by using the suppliers as John Crane and their technological expertise and industry-specific experience obtained over the decades. The modern process can conveniently split into two distinct uh, uh, processes. Uh, pulp mill and paper mill and their different stages uh, are described in this slide, starting from cooking and all the way to finished products. Many of the seals recommended to use in these various stages are dual pressurized, in other words, double arrangement, and the uh, seal recommendations made are based on extensive experience, but also safety considerations since pulp and paper plants use often hot and dangerous chemicals. Uh, they are based on environmental considerations since this is increasingly becoming an issue in the pulp and paper industry and not just chemical emissions. Water usage and disposal once contaminated are significant issues for both legislation and operating costs. Reliability, plants, standardizing, on recommended sealing solutions, regularly achieve meantime between uh, uh, failures well over uh, five years. And finally, standardization that provides operators with significant savings through reduced inventory. This is a typical layout of integrated mechanical pulp mill and paper mill. This process uses mechanical separation of fibers using refining and grinding instead of a chemical cooking process. The product fibers from the pulping process are not really suitable for making paper without further treatment. Fibers uh, at this stage have poor bonding qualities and would produce paper having very low strength. In order to create good fiber bonding, it's necessary to carry on further mechanical treatment in the pulp. This process includes several specialty stock preparation equipment, such as screens, refiners, pulpers, etc., that all require specific engineered sealing solutions to guarantee reliable operation. These sealing solutions, in addition to boosting operational efficiency by delivering improved mean time between repair, also address particular pulp and paper industry concerns, such as reducing water consumption and minimizing overall environmental impact. Now, uh, going to 
some of the applications. Uh, multiple and challenging applications uh, are really found in the pulp and paper industry, and they include various process pumps, chemical mixers, agitators, screens, pulpers, refiners, deflakers, rolls, screw pumps, different type of feeders and uh, 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 scrapers. So as you can see, there's a variety of different equipment that we are uh, dealing with uh, mechanical steel in pulp and paper industry. All these equipment will require process and equipment knowledge when making selections and decisions about mechanical seals and seal support systems for proper seal water controls and reduction of the water use. Some of the various pump types that we will find in the industry uh, uh, um, that typically have some 300 plus centrifugal pumps in, in the process. And these pump, they pump different liquids, such like paper stock, liggers, white and black, uh, wash waters, filters, different rejects, slurries and sludges, lime wash, uh, different condensate, chemicals. So it's very multiple uh, chemicals that we are dealing with. These pumps are also used to mix different liquids together, particularly in the bleaching plant area. So if we just look at the uh, paper stock pumps alone here, it's one of the most critical uh, and important uh, liquid that we are pumping in the, in the process. And uh, the paper stock consistencies usually range from less than 1% up to 6%, but they can uh, be even pumped up to consistencies uh, around 18%. So the different form and uh, thickness of the paper stock makes it very difficult to select the proper seal and then again, the stock can also contain air and gas, different type of contaminants, abrasive particles that will generate erosions. So material selection is important as well. When we're doing different pump types and brands, the soils of pumps are globally used in the industry applications. They have strengthened their presence in the pulp and paper by acquir acquiring several pump companies in the past years. And some of these are Austrian pumps, Bingham, and Warren pumps. Another well-established brand is Unbits. They have also a long history making uh, process and uh, engineered pumps. This image shows their latest pulp and paper process pump design. And as you all know, we are very excited to have Andit speak on this webinar today uh, a little bit later. These pumps are typically used in North American market. Most common is probably Gould's pumps, but we see a few FlowServe and Durco pumps that was acquired by FlowServe earlier. Seals that we are using in these uh, various pumps and models uh, we just reviewed vary a lot. Standard cartridge seals are primarily used uh, designed in North America, but in the rest of the world we see a lot of uh, seals fitted and integrated to pump in both cartridge but also semi cartridge versions. When you're looking into overall responses to environmental impacts, we can say that pulp and paper industry has made a huge effort. Uh, some responses they've done include uh, uh, using more and more renewable energy, just uh, such, such as biomass. They are using more rigorous control of water and chemical. Uh, they are ensuring that the waste products are very clean or utilized for byproducts. They're using less damaging agent in the pulp process. And again, they're using a lot of recycled fiber where the process will save energy and use less water and reduce the amount of chemicals when compared to making paper from the virgin fibers. In addition, the number of certificates has been established to indicate that the company operates in environmentally friendly manner. When we look into pump equipment environmental issues, most important is the correct seal collection and that supports pulp and paper move uh, to reduce impact. Uh, the correct seal selection really uh, uh, is helping
helping us to limit leakage from rotating equipment. It helps us to minimize water usage that is required to support the seal. It's helping us to minimize the power consumption and heat generation in, in, in the seal that is really considered as a waste. We at John Crane, we have developed a range of mechanical seals to respond to the demanding requirements of the pulp and paper industry. This includes fitted and application-specific seals uh, for different process fluids that we are pumping in the process. The problems imposed on mechanical seals vary depending on the location or the department in the plant, but generally they are caused by uh, toxic fluids, high temperatures, crystallizing products, uh, oxidizing, and corrosion. Some of the basic fluids can be very abrasive and viscous and clogging the, the systems. Paper stock is the most important common liquid in the pulp and paper, and the properties differ considerably across the process. So, so the seal selection is, is critical for the plant's reliability. That is really uh, showing about 60% uh, of the failures are based on uh, pump seals. So using junk grain seals, we are very confident that we can reach mean time between failure well above five years. Pulp and paper processes have many steps, uh, as we can see on this image. Uh, and all the different steps differ uh, uh, from each other. In, in general, sealing solutions need a comprehensive range of application designed mechanical seals to satisfy pulp and paper sealing requirements. Let's take an example here. Uh, stringent requirement of a pulp digester operation that is traditionally seen as an area of mill operation, which places the most arduous demands on sealing products, and that must, that must uh, withstand high temperatures and pressure shocks, disruptive solids. Uh, that's very demanding application. Or another example here, the paper stock preparation area that represents another area where we have a very large and hard to disassemble shaft that have traditionally been seared with packing. But uh, having the option today to use range of fully split seals, which can also quickly and easily install on these applications and rely to perform really well. The uh, sealing problem, uh, uh, as we have discussed, the, the applications are often very severe. And uh, uh, the different issues are different depending on the uh, location of the plant. Uh, just looking at the image here, uh, and this is an example of the paper stock uh, consistency and the, uh, the characteristic of the different percentage. If you look at 2.5, 5% paper stock. It's very liquid form. But higher the consistency gets, uh, around 6%, it's already very difficult to move around. And 10%, it's strong enough, it's solid enough, almost a man stand on it. So uh, it's obviously in the mill's interest if a single standard seal type could be uh, used or to cover the majority of the duties. But however, the wide variety of process uh, applications will make this difficult. The C recommendation, therefore, should focus on equipment and process location for maximum reliability. Going to the seal support system, uh, uh, mechanical seals, they, they often need support liquid. And in the pulp and paper industry, this is typically water. On the small images above, we see a typical seal water flow meters controlling the water and uh, flow and the pressure through the seals. And just to give an idea, uh, what is the typical flow range through a single mechanical seal? Uh, if you can imagine an Olympic sized swimming pool, that is how much water we will put through one seal, and that equals about 2100 cubic meters or 75,000 cubic foot. 
So if we extend, expand this to cover the whole plant, whole paper mill, we are looking at uh, about a small dam full of water that is that we're putting through the seals, about 2 million cubic meter uh, per, per year. So uh, as stated before, seawater problems, uh, they are causing a lot of problems to, to the seals and the performance. And we here at Junkering, we have developed a range of filtration and flow control products, not only to support the seal to an excellent standard, but also to reduce the indirect cost and maintaining and replacing mechanical seals. This kind of concludes my part here. Uh, thank you very much. And now I would like to hand over to Mark Savage, who will talk about the importance of the proper seal selection and how to reduce the water and energy waste. Thank you very much, Yussi. Um, before I get started, I'd like to take a little poll of the audience. Um, if you could take a moment to answer the, uh, the question that we have up here on your screen. Um, do you need help assessing your seal and pump environmental footprint to increase operating efficiency and reduce water consumption? It's good to see that uh, some, uh, some of our participants have a plan in place, but there's also uh, a number of people that uh, need some help getting started. So I'm hoping some of this information may point you in the right direction, and uh, the organizations here can certainly help you uh, achieve that. Okay, moving on. Uh, I'm going to uh, discuss um, about the importance of seal selection and how that can impact um, waste water, reducing wastewater and the energy requirements for that shaft sealing system. A requirement of all fluid handling centrifugal equipment is for a rotating shaft that needs to pass through a pressure containing casing. It is at this interface where the shaft passes through the casing where a seal is needed. The job of the seal is to allow the shaft to rotate while containing the fluid within the pressure casing. There are a variety of methods to achieve containment of the fluid. However, careful selection of the sealing technology is needed to minimize energy consumption and to minimize waste water. The most common rotating fluid handling machine is a centrifugal pump. And the purpose of a pump is to add energy to a fluid to create pressure and flow. However, not all of that energy provided by the driver is transferred into the fluid. There are a number of energy losses within a pump, and one of those being the shaft sealing system. Understanding these energy losses is key to selecting a shaft sealing system that will minimize energy consumption and water wastage. This webinar is going to discuss three sealing technologies that are used to seal pumping equipment, and these are packing, a single mechanical seal, and dual pressurized mechanical seals. Packing is a braided yarn made from a variety of natural or synthetic fibers, such as flax, TFE, graphite, aramid fibers, among others. These fibers are coated with a variety of compounds that prevent permeation through the packing ring, inhibit corrosion, improve chemical resistance, and provide a lubricant. Packing is either supplied as a pre-cut ring to fit a specific shaft size, or cut from a spool to make a custom fit to a specific piece of equipment. Each packing ring is installed one at a time into the stuffing box and tamped into place with an appropriate tool. The split or joint in each packing ring are staggered from adjacent rings so that a leak path is not inadvertently created. Once all the packing rings are installed, the gland follower is positioned against the last packing ring and the gland bolts uh, secure the gland follower in place. The next stage is to adjust the gland follower to ensure that it leaks. The leakage rate is controlled by the pressure exerted by the gland follower on the end of the packing set, and a leak is allowed to generate along the shaft, providing a cooling medium, removing the frictional heat generation of the rotation of the shaft 
in the packing set. During operation, the lubricant in the packing melts slightly and is washed away by the flow of liquid along the shaft. The loss of lubricant decreases the volume of the packing ring set. And remember that leakage rate is controlled by the pressure exerted on the packing set by the gland follower. This loss in volume cause, causes this pressure to decrease and thus the leakage rate will go up. To compensate for this, the gland bolts need to be regularly adjusted to increase the pressure on the packing set and bring the leakage back to its original leakage rate. This is a critical task and must be done correctly. Over tightening the gland bolts, thinking that it will increase the interval that adjustments are needed, will cause excessive friction, energy loss, and will cause the lubricant to melt away faster. Not to mention damage to the packing fibers and shaft will also occur. Wear is always at play in a packed stuffing box. Even in a clean fluid, wear is caused by dirt particles, various oxides, grit, mica, and many other minute contaminants that exist in all fluid systems. However, when the pumped fluid contains suspended solids or fibers, this wear rate is accelerated as these particles become embedded into the packing rings. This wear, together with the loss of lubricant volume, causes an acceler accelerated rate of leakage increase. And once the particles are embedded into the packing rings, they continue to cause wear even after the periodic adjustments to the gland bolts are made to control leakage. This cycle ultimately leads to the destruction of the packing gland as an effective leakage control device. To solve this problem, a lantern ring is added to the stuffing box and a lantern ring, a ring with some radial holes through it, is added between the packing rings. The lantern ring can either be metallic or non-metallic, depending on the pumping conditions and the fluid properties. It features a relief in the center part of the ring on both its inner and outer diameters, and this is to ensure that it always aligns with the lantern ring connection and a flow path can be established. A clean external fluid can now be injected into the lantern ring at a pressure higher than that inside of the pump. This fluid then flows in two directions, one to the atmosphere and appears as leakage, and two into the pump where it dilutes the pump fluid. For the packing rings, this has the effect of converting sealing a dirty fluid into sealing a clean fluid. The adjustments to regulate leakage still need to be made as I described earlier. The number of packing rings between the lantern ring and the pump's impeller varies with the pump design and how much suspended particles or fibers are in the pump fluid. The fewer packing rings that are between the lantern ring and the impeller, the greater the flow of flush fluid that can be injected in the pump. This allows a pumped fluid with higher concentrations of particles or fibers to be effectively sealed. However, these flow rates can become quite substantial, particularly as shaft diameters increase and the concentration of particles and fibers increase. Consideration also needs to be made to the effects of dilution of the pump fluid. And in many cases, this dilution is undesirable and any fluid that is added into the pump fluid will later need to be removed and this can create quite a substantial energy burden on the pumping system to remove this fluid. To understand the energy consumption of a shaft sealing system, an energy balance can be conducted. This is a simplified approach that considers only the components directly relating to the shaft sealing system. It ignores other components in the system such as the efficiencies of converting electrical energy from the motor into hydraulic energy produced by the pump's impeller. By looking at the energy entering and exiting the pump, the losses can be quantified with some assumptions. And this will enable a calculation to be made of the energy requirements of a particular shaft sealing system. When we consider the energy boundary for packing, the most obvious energy consumption is from the drag placed on the shaft caused by the friction generated as the gland follower squeezes the packing rings. 
Additionally, energy is lost as external flush fluid is injected into the lantern ring connection. This takes a number of forms, the first being the energy required to increase the pressure and flow in order to inject that fluid into the lantern ring connection. Second, the cooling effect of the pump media caused by product dilution. Thirdly, the direct loss of energy caused by fluid leakage to the atmosphere. And lastly, the pump still needs to pump this fluid that is added into the process. Thus, not all the energy that the impeller is adding to the fluid is the pumped process fluid itself. And all of these losses need to be provided by the driver in addition to the energy required to generate pressure and flow within the pump. When, it, when considering the utility consumption for packing, the, the analysis is a little bit easier. In simple terms, what goes in must come out. An external flush fluid that is added into the lantern ring connection exits the pump either through the discharge of the pump or via leakage to atmosphere. Now we're going to talk about mechanical seals. Um, mechanical seals are in a, available in a number of different styles and types. Each has its advantages and disadvantages, and the best solution is dependent upon the conditions in the seal chamber that the mechanical seal is required to operate. Here we see a, a cartridge single mechanical seal. A single seal consists of one seal face that is rotating with the shaft, one seal face that is stationary with the pump pressure casing, and a flexible element that allows for the tiny axial movements that occur in any rotating machine due to bearing clearances, axial displacement due to thermal distortion, and mechanical distortion. In this case, the flexible element consists of a combination of a stationary coil spring and an O-ring that allows the axial displacement of the shaft. It is the interface between the rotating and stationary seal face that the dynamic sealing occurs. These two surfaces that are ma manufactured extremely flat and smooth are lubricated by the pump fluid to create a seal that contains the pressure within the pump. In comparison to packing, leakage rates are extremely low, as too is the frictional drag placed on the shaft. In a clean pumping application, a single mechanical seal <clears throat> often has a flush connection that is connected to the pump discharge or some other higher pressure point in the pump. This creates the pressure differential across the seal that results in the pump media flowing through the seal chamber. This flow provides the benefit of removing any heat that is generated by the mechanical seal but also removes any debris that might be present in the pump fluid that potentially can accumulate in the seal chamber and interfere with the operation of the seal. When considering the energy boundary for a single mechanical seal, the analysis is relatively simple. The frictional drag on the shaft caused by the mechanical seal is one to two orders of magnitude smaller than that of packing. And in addition, it is not subjected to the variability of the interactions with the pumping equipment by plant maintenance personnel that are required to undertake periodic adjustment of the gland follower. The volume of fluid recirculated from the pump discharge through the seal chamber is generally small and controlled with a combination of an orifice within the pipe feeding the mechanical seal and a bushing placed in the throat of the seal chamber. The energy losses due to this fluid needing to be repumped by the pump is ignored unless these flow control systems are in inadequate to regulate the flush flow rates. As the rotating and stationary seal faces of a single mechanical seal are lubricated by the pumped fluid, the properties of this fluid have an effect on the performance of that me single mechanical seal. When the pump fluid contains suspended solids or fibers, this can affect the successful lubrication of the seal faces. And in addition, these particles can impact how well the flexible element within the mechanical seal operates, often creating premature wear, causing this feature to stop functioning as designed. To achieve 
reliability of a single seal in these sealing environments, the presence of these particles or fibers must be removed. This can be achieved by introducing an external clean flush to the mechanical seal. An external flush has the benefit of removing the heat generated by the mechanical seal, but more importantly, it displaces particles or fibers from the mechanical seal chamber. The flow rate of the external flush can be controlled and regulated by a number of means. The most simplest is the addition of a close clearance bush in the throat of the seal chamber. The John Crane safe unit is one option to provide a controlled external flush injection to the seal chamber. This device has the ability to regulate the flow and pressure of the flush fluid introduced into the seal chamber. When considering the energy boundary for a single mechanical seal with an external flush, the analysis needs to take into consideration the impacts of the addition of the flush fluid that is added into the pump. As the mechanical seal leakage is minimal and will essentially remain unchanged, the cooling effect of the pump media caused by product dilution needs to be considered. In addition, just like the case for packing, the pump needs to pump this fluid that is added to the process, thus not all the energy that the impeller is adding to the pumped process fluid is going into the fluid. Uh, dual mechanical seals. Here we see a cartridge dual mechanical seal. A dual mechanical seal consists of an assembly that has two seal faces that are rotating with the shaft and two steel seal faces that are stationary with the pump pressure casing. Each one of these face pairs has a flexible element that allows for the tiny axial movements that occur. And in this case, the flexible element consists of a combination of a coil spring and an O-ring. The cavity that is formed between these two seal faces is filled with a pressurized fluid, and this fluid is supplied at a pressure higher than that in the seal chamber, and it provides lubrication of the seal faces as well as removing any heat generated by the mechanical seal. This is a key differentiator as the lubrication of the inboard seal faces is no longer the pumped fluid, but rather the barrier fluid whose properties and conditions can be externally controlled. There are a number of methods that this pressurized barrier fluid can be supplied to the mechanical seal. The simplest is a pressurized, pressurized reservoir. Um, also known as a Plan 53A, and this is what we see in the image. But it can extend to more elaborate systems that include a central lubrication system that services multiple pumps. In addition, there are proprietary systems such as John Crane's Smart Flow that thermally regulate the delivery and temperature of the barrier fluid. When considering the energy boundary for a dual mechanical seal, the first obvious thing is the drag on the shaft due to the mechanical seal will be more than that for a single mechanical seal, but it's also much less than that of packing. As lubrication of the mechanical seal faces is provided by the barrier fluid, no external flush is required. The analysis can now be reduced to considering the impacts of the heat energy removed from the pump by the barrier system. This heat energy will be a combination of the seal face heat generation together with heat absorbed into the barrier fluid from the pumped media. Now let's look at some side-by-side -side comparisons of the energy and water requirements of these sealing systems we've discussed. If we take a representative pump with an inch and three-quarter shaft uh, sealing water with suspended solids at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and this pump is operating 300 days a year, we can perform an energy boundary analysis and quantify the energy needs of each of these sealing options. The Fluid Sealing Association has a pump life cycle cost calculator that can assist us in making these calculations. Here we can see four ceiling scenarios compared side by side. 
The first column we see is packing with a flush into the lantern ring connection. The second column is a single seal with an external flush. And the last two columns are dual mechanical seals, each with different methods of supplying the barrier fluid. The first one is from a closed loop system, also known as a Plan 53A, and the other one is from a central system known as a Plan 54. As you can see, there are substantial water reduction opportunities that can be achieved by replacing packing with a dual mechanical seal. In this case, if we had 45 of these pumps, that would equate to a water reduction of 2 million gallons a year. Now in this analysis, we've assumed that any process dilution by the flush fluid does not need to be removed. However, when we add in the energy requirements to remove the flush fluid that was added into the process, we can now see how substantial these energy requirements can be. And on that note, I'm going to hand over to Alex Pasler from Andritz who will discuss the results of a real-world case study with a medium consistency pump. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, first of all, I would like to lose a few words about the uh, history of pumps within the Andritz company. Actually, the first Andritz pump was assembled in the 1880s already in Graz, Austria. And today we have about 15,000 pumps and pumping systems in operation all over the world. Uh, some of them are huge, like for power storage uh, usage, and some of them are small or mid-sized standard pumps, uh, which are also used in pulp and paper industry. In general, we have a quite strong focus on the pulp and paper industry, not only for pumps, also for other equipment. The main pumps in every fiber line actually are the MC pumps. MC pumps are intended to pump, sus pump suspensions up to 16% of pulp, no matter which kind of pulp. And actually we also use it in the sugar industry where we are pumping sliced and cooked sugar beets after the sugar were cooked out, out of the beet. In this diagram, you can see just the QA range of the different pump sizes we are offering for the MC series. The development of the MC series started in the year 2005 on our own test loop. This test loop was continuously in operation until 2013, and it's still used today for further improvements. Uh, we, we tested every single pump in real, si in real size, so there was no scaling done. We really used the pumps which we are selling up to now. Main parts of the MC pumps are same as for actually every other process pump as well, such as wire casings and impellers. But in addition, in addition to that, there's also, for example, a fluidizer to fluidize the pulse suspension. Just remember the picture shown by Yossi of a man standing safe on a pulp suspension of only 10%, and we are pumping way higher suspensions up to 16%. To handle the air content in the suspension, there is also, our pumps are also equipped with a smart set system. This smart set system ensures property gassing and prevents any fiber loss. Due to that, the pump design can focus on high efficiency and the vacuum pump free operation becomes possible as well. But to, see, to get the air out of the pump, you need to know where the, pump is located, uh, where the air is located inside of the pump. Therefore, we, need, we needed to do a three-phase CFD calculation. Three-phase in this case means water, bulb, and air. In this picture, you can see how the air is accumulating in the rear of the impeller, uh, very close to the shaft center. As soon as the, uh, the air is accumulating there, it can be pushed out through the smart step system.
today's topic actually is how to save water. In our case, water is used to cool and lubricate the double mechanical seal. This water could be reused or just saved by using a barrier fluid system, as we learned before. But there are also is used a small amount of water to flush the smart step system. But a big saving potential in our case actually is the vacuum pump. Because as you know, the vacuum pump needs some water as working fluid. But if you don't need a vacuum pump, you also don't need a barrier fluid, so you can save quite a lot of water. In the picture, you can see also uh, that the vacuum pump would need the, most, the highest amount of water of the whole system. No need of a vacuum pump is also simplifying the control logic, of course. This picture here is showing how much simpler the control logic got compared to a conventional technology. A higher pressure in the degassing line indicates fibers flowing through the pipe. That means that the risk of blocking of the degassing line will increase. So you always need a continuously flushing of the piping with water. Without any fibers, no flushing is needed there. So no water need to be wasted as well for this purpose. In this diagram, you can see how the smart SIP system improved the situation in the degassing line. Talking about sustainability also means talking about power consumption, not only uh, saving water. Here you can see how much the SmartSAP technology improved the efficiency of our MC pumps. This become, became possible because to this SmartSAP technology, the hydraulic was uh, optimized for good efficiencies and, was no, and no compromises had to be done for separation of the air. But to know, to know the saving potential in your pulp and paper mill, you need to know how much water is used and where it is used. If you take, for example, a, a fiber line with a production of four to 5,000 aromatic tons per day, uh, you will have, for example, 11 MC pumps. These 11 MC pumps are equipped with a double mechanical seal they need water for cooling and lubricating of the seal surfaces of, let's say, three liters per minute. A lower amount, as I already said, for flushing separation unit and stuff. And a quite huge amount if a vacuum pump is installed. Let's guess about 10 liters per minute only for vacuum pump. But not only MC pumps are installed there. For the whole process, you need a lot of process pumps. In this case, let's assume 135 process pumps. A typical, uh, a typical plant would use about 55% of double mechanical seals, which needs water for cooling and lubrication as well, like for the MC pump. Close to 50%, 40 to 45% of semi mechanical seals, which sometimes need a flushing, but it's hard to quote because you never know how many pumps need a flushed uh, single mechanical seal and you also have no idea how much water goes in there for flushing. And a very low amount is still using good old stuffing box where you also need some water for cooling. If we summed it up, we said we have about 10 vacuum pumps for MC pumps. And if we don't need the vacuum pump, we don't need the water for the vacuum pump. So we would save about 144 cubic meters per day, which sounds maybe not that much, but if it's continuously running for only for one year, for example, it's more than 50,000 cubic meters a year. And only the costs for this water, for the vacuum pumps, is about 10,000 or more than 10,000 euros a year. Calculated to US dollars, it would be about 13,000 US dollars. For the double mechanical seals, of the process pumps and also for the MC pumps, uh, we would need about 440, uh, 440 cubic meters per day, or more than 160,000 cubic meters per year, which means more than 30,000 euros a year. 
or close to, or let's say, about 37,000 U.S. dollars. And as I already said, for to change the single mechanical seal to a double mechanical seal with a pressurized sealing water system, you could also save some water, but it's hard to quote, so I didn't count that here. But if you sum up only these two potentials, we could save close to 600 cubic meters per day, or per year more than 200,000 cubic meters, which means uh, 42,000 or more than 42,000 euros per year. Or if you calculate it to dollars, it's about 50,000 US dollars. You can save only for water. So actually, that was everything I wanted to say, and uh, it's also the end of my presentation. I only can say thank you, and I can hand over. Thanks, Alex. So we hope that this webinar has helped provide you with practical ideas on how to solve some difficult pulp and paper challenges, um, that it's delivered better understanding of the importance of seal selection, and taught you some new tools and strategies to use to achieve seal water energy and cost savings, fostered knowledge in, um, with the results we just heard from Andritz, and to educate you on trends and environmental implications that John Crane is seeing in the pulp and paper industry. So now we have time for just a couple of questions. So first I would like to ask UC and Mark, and if they both just uh, would take turns responding, the question is, if you could recommend just one water reduction strategy to today's listeners, what would it be? Well, Mark, if you don't mind, I'll start here. Uh, that's a kind of tricky question since uh, there, there's not really one strategy that fits all. Uh, I guess uh, to measure really our success, the first thing to do is uh, uh, do an audit where the uh, current seal and seal water usage, different control systems and uh, uh, equipment in place will be measured. And based on the results, we can select the most efficient way to reduce the water usage. Um, I guess it's not really surprising, but in many cases, uh, uh, in mills, uh, they're just using ball valves to control the water flow, which means that there's no controls at all. And if we just replace those ball valves with uh, decent flow meters like safe unit, that alone is uh, reduce water flow easily uh, from six to 10 gallons per minute to down to one gallon per minute. That would be a good start. Uh, just, just to reaffirm uh, UC's point, uh, I, I think the key thing is you need to be able to measure the water consumption that you currently have. Um, if, if you're not measuring it, you don't know where the high usage is, and you don't know which assets you need to focus your attention on to be able to achieve those water reductions. Thank you, Alicia. That Okay, thank you. That totally makes sense. Um, so, Alex, I have a question for you. So, during your presentation, you mentioned a 16% efficiency. Is there a minimum that people can expect? Actually, there's no minimum at all. You could run OMC bombs also with clean water. But for economical reasons, for sure, the goal is to use a normal process pump as long as possible. Therefore, we provide a wide range of impeller types and also a degassing system for our ACP series. So, actually, I can only answer no, actually, there's no uh, lower limit, but for economical reasons, for sure, there is somehow a limit. And we use MC pumps con for a consistency starting with 8%, and below, we are using normal ACP pumps normally. Okay. I hope this is uh, answering your question. Yeah, yeah, thank you. This next one is also for uh, Mark and UC. And uh, the, the, in the second poll, more than 50% said that they are in the discovery process or they need help moving to the next step. And so I'd like to ask, with the limited budgets and the reality of the skills gap, what's your advice on implementing a water reduction strategy in a plant? I'll answer this. Um, uh, it, it's, 
It's a very good question, and it's a reality of, of most organizations uh, in, in today's day and age. I think the, the key component is um, forming alliances with uh, organizations that can provide that level of expertise, um, which is often fading out of industry, um, and to partner with organizations such as John Crane and Andritz um, to be able to assist an organization to focus their efforts where they're going to get the biggest bang for their buck. Um, it's, it stops having to reinvent the wheel um, and it allows you to get to a viable solution faster and more economically. Thanks, Alicia. Thanks, Mark. Um, I think that this is going to be our last question, and it is for Alex. In your business dealings with your customers, do you see people asking about water savings um, or demanding um, better water savings? As yeah, actually, it's a good, it's actually, it's a good question because in the past, uh, we never faced this demand, well, not that often, but uh, we see at least that it's becoming more and more serious. And sometimes also the requirement is a ceiling water free run at all because if the pump, for example, is somewhere in an area of a plant where there's no ceiling water uh, installed, the customer just wants to save the installation of the ceiling water uh, equipment. So more and more there is coming such, uh, uh, such requirement also for cost and environmental reasons. Right, so there are a lot of reasons that people are, are looking to save water and Really, we yes, talked about there are different a lot reasons, and it's becoming really more and more. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that was a great presentation. I really enjoyed it. I want to thank UC and Mark from John Crane, and also Alex from Andritz. I am appreciative of everyone who attended today. Thank you very much from Pumps and Systems. The presentation will be available next week at pumpsandsystems.com backslash webinars. So check it out. Again, thank you very much. And with that, I end today's webinar.